Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dorothy May Mercer for Talk Story TV. Today we have a Dr. Mark Halpern as our guest. He is the founder of a college in California, the Fo California College of Ayurveda. And you'll hear a bit more about that in a moment. It's located in Nevada City, California. Now, Dr. Halpern gives clinics all over the United States in, in the healing power of Ayurveda. Also, he's a certified specialist in yoga and in uh, holistic medicine, as well as being a doctor. Now, uh, he wants to tell you a little bit about his book, so we may be able to twist his arm for that, too. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Mark Halpern. Welcome to the show, Mark. Hello, Dorothy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's great to have you. Perhaps you'd like to start a little bit by telling us how you happened to get into medicine and where you got your training. Well, Dorothy, my interest has been in the healing arts since I was very, very young. When I was just 13 years old, I decided that I wanted to do something in life that would help me and help others to be both happy and healthy. And that journey led me originally to a chiropractor. And the, this particular chiropractor I met was the very first practitioner or uh, person working in the healing arts that I saw who was himself very happy and very healthy. I was quite inspired by him. He took me under his wing. And when I was 16, he took me to a chiropractic college and I decided at that time that that was what I wanted to be. I wanted to work to remove the cause of disease, the cause of suffering. But as my journey progressed, I became a chiropractor, but I realized that there was more to healing than removing the interference that occurs within a person's spine. And so it, it uh, inspired me to continue my journey into understanding the cause of disease and the cause of suffering. And that journey led me to study many other forms of medicine, including homeopathy and Chinese medicine. I, it also inspired me to study herbalism, uh, ultimately to become certified as a holistic health specialist. But it was when I studied Ayurvedic medicine that I became truly inspired. And it was when I studied Ayurvedic medicine that I really came to understand the cause of disease and the cause of suffering. And I knew I was home. I knew that I would be spending the rest of my life dedicating myself to helping others through the knowledge and the science of Ayurveda. The term Ayurveda may be new to some of our viewers. Uh, where did you get your training and, and what does it mean? Well, the word Ayurveda means the knowledge of life. Uh, Veda means knowledge and Ayas means life in Sanskrit. It's the traditional medicine of India. And so uh, when you study Ayurvedic medicine, you're really studying every facet of life and how it relates to health and to well-being. And there's really no part of our life that doesn't relate to our health and well-being. Everything that we do from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep affects our health and well-being. And then even when we're asleep, of course, the quality of our sleep affects our health and well-being. So Ayurveda really addresses the 24-hour cycle of how we live our lives, everything from what we eat to what we think to the work that we do in the world to how we, we look at the world, what we, what we look at, what we smell, what we hear, what we touch, how we're touched, every facet of life 
affects our health and our well-being. And Ayurveda is the science of understanding how that happens. Well, when you get a patient and you, you proceed to diagnose this patient, you've got a lot of things to consider, haven't you? Yeah, we do, Dorothy. Uh, you know, we, of course, have to begin with a complete health history. And our history that we take in Ayurvedic medicine is really quite comprehensive and much more comprehensive than you'll see in general Western medicine or perhaps any other discipline of health because we want to know what happens to you from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep and how you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. So we ask about your work life. We ask about your relationships. We ask about what you're eating. We ask about when you're eating. We ask about what the environment is like where you're eating. We ask about all of your interests. And you know, Dorothy, our goal really is to understand where in your life you're in harmony and where in your life you're out of harmony with your environment. And we say that when you're living in harmony with your environment through your five senses, in other words, what you look at, what you smell, what you taste, when you are living in harmony through your five senses with your environment, your body will respond by being healthy and being well and your mind will be happy and content. But when you're living out of harmony, then your body responds to that as well. And it responds to it in the form of symptoms or disease. So our goal is to understand first and foremost, why do you feel the way you do? And what can we do in terms of counseling you in your lifestyle? What can you do that's going to improve your health and well-being? So a lot of what we do is lifestyle counseling. And then, of course, we work with Ayurvedic medicines as well. Ayurvedic medicine then includes herbal medicine, regular um, Western medicine, what? Ayurvedic medicine is anything that you can take into your, your body, your mind, through your five senses. Yes, we do work with herbs, and at our pharmacy, we have about 200 raw ingredients, and we mix those herbs together to match the needs of each patient. And our students at our college, the California College of Ayurveda, learn how to formulate their own medicines for their own patients so that when they graduate, they'll also be able to make those medicines for their patient. But medicine is not just herbs, and it's not just drugs. Medicine is also colors, it's also what you look at, it's what you smell, aromatherapy, it's what you hear, sound therapy, and it's also how you're touched, and that's touch therapy or mas and massage therapy. All of these are forms of medicine because you're really taking in the impressions through each of those five senses, and that changes your physiology. Depending upon what you take in through your five senses, your physiology will respond to that. And if it responds in a healthy way, you'll feel well. If it responds in an unhealthy way, you won't feel well. So Ayurveda is a science of taking in through your five senses that which will optimize your physiology and it will restore your health and your well-being. Sounds wonderful. Uh, a, pers a typical student that comes to your college how would that student be prepared? Would they have a bachelor's degree? Would they have an MD degree? Would they be chiropractors? Or all of the above? All of the above. We have uh, uh, students at our school who are part of major universities and, and medical centers. We have chiropractors. We have nurses. We also have a lot of yoga teachers. We also have a lot of uh, healers that come from many of the more esoteric healing arts. Every student who comes to our school comes because they've been inspired to understand or to know really in their heart uh, that there's more to healing than most people think. There's more to healing than just taking a drug or a medicine or receiving a surgery. The healing is a path that we walk. It is something that goes on inside of ourselves. It's a journey back to back to harmony and that our health and our well-being is a reflection of that. I wrote a book, as you mentioned when you first okay. uh, introduced me, called Healing Your Life, Lessons on the Path of Ayurveda, 
And it's called Lessons on the Path of Ayurveda because it really is a journey to be well. We start where we are today, and Ayurveda takes us on a journey to reach our full potential physically, emotionally, and even spiritually in the sense that our potential is to feel that deep sense of connectedness to all of creation. And our health and our well-being is connected, it's integrated physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So an Ayurvedic practitioner takes you on that journey, and our students are medical doctors, yoga teachers, chiropractors, and nurses. And we also have a lot of students who come to us right out of high school now and have decided to make Ayurveda their first career. And so they study with us for three to four years in order to receive their certification as a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. I imagine that it would be a perfect uh, course of study for a physician's assistant. You didn't mention that. But I've, you know, had, ex I've had experience with ph physician's assistants, uh, and they seem to be more interested in the non-traditional medicines. And they also will practice traditional medicine, but if it's something else that they think will help, they will prescribe it for me or, or advise me, or sometimes they'll loan me a book, you know? Well, you know, Dorothy, it might just be because I'm in California, but I'm finding that more and more of the traditional Western medical establishment is open-minded to alternative medicine in ways that we would not have seen 20 or 30 years ago today. I have been invited to lecture to medical students and medical doctors at the uh, medical school at UC Davis, at the OSHA Center for Integrative Medicine in San Francisco that's connected to San Francisco State University, uh, and uh, or San Francisco um, uh, uh, College of Medicine, uh, and to other medical schools. And today in medical schools, students are learning about alternative medicine. And they recognize that every form of medicine has its value. And I think there's more mutual respect today than there's ever been before. So we do have physicians assistants and nurse practitioners, medical doctors who come to our school, who come to our clinic for their own care here at the California College of Ayurveda. Tell me about the clinic. What, what goes on there? Well, we have a, a, a busy clinic, and we see a wide range of patients that present to us with the full array of conditions that one might see in an internal medicine practice. So we have patients who come to us with everything from ulcerative colitis to high blood pressure, from Lyme's disease to chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, we have patients with Parkinson's disease and we have patients with cancer. There is really no condition that we don't see here at our, at our clinic because the human body has a remarkable capacity to heal itself when you create the right environment for healing to take yes. place. Yes. And our goal in Ayurveda is to create the optimum environment for healing to take place. When we normalize the physiology of the body through diet and through herbs, through aromas and through colors, through lifestyle and through touch, when we optimize the physiology of the body, the body has the best chance to heal and it does heal. And then of course there's the medicine. So when you combine the medicine we give to patients, the herbal medicines, with the lifestyle changes that we encourage them to make, we have remarkable results. Well, do you use a traditional drug company medicine like a doctor would do or is it all the herbal? The graduates of our school who have medical degrees will use both herbal medicine as well as the, the Western medicines. And the graduates of our school who do not have Western medical degrees will then, of course, use the herbal medicines, the traditional medicines from India that have been used for thousands of years and have been designed to work with all of these conditions. Well, The people, true medicine that we work with... You know, people, Go ahead, Dorothy. People had to make their own medicine. They've done that for centuries. So what you're doing yes, is, is recapturing that and then proving on that. Uh, in, the, in the modern scientific way, you can study and improve everything that's done. I, I think that's just wonderful to be able to uh, 
create the special medicine just for that person. Wow, that would be great, wouldn't it? Instead of having to take. Well, you know, Dorothy, that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what we do. And we say in Ayurveda that no two people experience the same disease. So when we have a patient who comes to us, or several patients that come to us, let's say with rheumatoid arthritis, we may not give the same medicine to each patient because we understand that each person with rheumatoid arthritis presents differently to us. Some have more swelling. Some have more redness in their joints. Some have more pain. Some have widespread rheumatoid arthritis and joint damage, and some only have it a little bit. And so every patient is different. Some will also not be sleeping well, and others will be sleeping well. We treat them all uniquely and individually, and the medicines that we make for them are also unique and individualized to address their needs, and even the lifestyle changes and the diet we prescribe for them will also be different depending upon the uniqueness of their condition and their presentation. So everything we do in Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine has always been individualized medicine. It's medicine for each person. It's not a statistical form of medicine. Uh, there's quite a bit of psychology involved, too. I can, I can see that. Uh, are you able to treat addiction? You know, Dorothy, we treat everything because we treat the whole body, the whole mind, and the whole consciousness of an individual. Now, we don't have a medicine in the sense that's going to take a person's addiction away. A lot of what we do is counseling work. And the counseling work that we do with people is to support them to adopt a healthy lifestyle. And that's a gradual process that sometimes takes 6 to 12 months to really deepen, and so we meet with our patients on a weekly basis. Some of those patients have addiction issues, and so we work with them with drug and alcohol addiction. While we are working with medicines to help alleviate the suffering that comes from withdrawal, we're also working on helping them adopt positive lifestyle behaviors that replace the more challenging lifestyle behaviors. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy, as you know, Addiction is a challenge that pe people struggle with. It comes and it goes. It comes and it goes. But really, Dorothy, that's the challenge we all face with any lifestyle change. How many times have people tried to begin an exercise program and they start and stop, start and stop, or try to go on a diet and they start and stop, start and stop? And it's the same thing with drugs. Yeah, it's the same thing with drugs and with alcohol. So our role really is to provide ongoing support for them and ongoing encouragement and ongoing compassion because really those individuals that are suffering with drug and alcohol addiction need a safe place, a compassionate place from which they can pursue their journey of healing. It's a tough one. Addiction is tough, very difficult. And it is. especially to drugs. It's even alcohol is terrible, but drugs is, are worse than the many of the alcoholics are also are taking drugs. Uh, and so you I'm know, Dorothy, it's... Go ahead. Dorothy, it's interesting uh, because you mentioned about the danger of drugs. There's actually more addiction today to prescribed drugs than there is to the street drugs. Yeah. And it's not just a little bit more addiction to the prescribed drugs, it's much larger problem than the street drugs. So one of, the, uh, one of the, the benefits that comes with Ayurvedic medicine is that it prevents a lot of addiction simply by offering people an alternative to the addictive medicines that people are using for pain relief, for the management of anxiety, for the management of depression. These types of uh, drugs are very, very addictive and very toxic to the body. So we offer them an alternative as well. Mm, that's amazing. That's wonderful. So you've been around the country and you've, you've given a lot of talks in clinics and you've uh, talked to medical schools there in uh, California and you're just spreading the gospel, doing a great job. Um, and I think people who can't get out to California might be interested in your book. They really might. What, what would be 
Can you tell us a little bit about your book and how that might help the uh, the lay reader, or is it mostly a professional? Uh, no, the, this book particularly has been written for the general public. I have written textbooks. That's not this book. Okay. This book was meant to inspire the healing journey of each person, to encourage, to support, and to educate each person about how to heal their life. That's mm -hmm. the goal of this book, is to take you from where you are now and give you a guided uh, journey, so to speak, that you can follow to walk the path wow. toward your own healing. It'll educate you about what diet you should follow. It'll educate you about what colors are right for you, what aromas are right for you, what visual impressions, sound, uh, aromatherapy, touch therapy. It's all covered in this book in great detail, and it helps you to understand what's right for you, not what's right for everyone. So you will go through the process in this book of figuring out your constitution, which is your unique physiology, as well as the unique physiology of any imbalance you have, and then you can match up the diet and the lifestyle to your unique physiology. And that's, that's really what this book is about. It's called Healing Your Life, Lessons on the Path of Ayurveda. That's why we like to go out and uh, experience nature. Well, maybe not everybody, but I certainly do love to get out and experience nature and water and animals and we're very lucky in to be retired into a very nice place on a inland lake and we see the deer and the squirrels and the lovely birds and we can get out on the water and just walk it's really great used to live in you the know, city Dorothy. <laughs> pardon you know, you know, Dorothy, that alone is very therapeutic, and you're taking in through your eyes harmonious impressions, and when you do, your physiology changes in a way that helps you to be more relaxed, it helps you to be more healthy, and you feel different when you're looking at the deer and the open fields than you might when you're looking upon the opposite, let's just say, uh, violence, when you're looking upon... Uh, dirt, when you're, and I don't mean the earth dirt, but I just mean a dirty city, for instance, uh -huh. or a uh, unpleasant environment of any kind that changes your physiology. So in a way, you're already practicing a part of Ayurveda, which is to begin to consciously create your environment. You know, Dorothy, we're very much like plants. If you, if you're a plant or a plant receives the proper temperature, and the proper sunlight, the proper soil, the right amount of water and nutrients, that plant is going to have a deep, rich color and lots of blossoms. And you're the same way. When you find yourself in the right environment, when the visual imagery you're taking in is positive, when you're being touched appropriately, when you're taking in the proper foods, when you are in an environment where you're receiving everything you need, you will have a deep, rich color just like that plant, and you will fully blossom just like that plant, and you'll reach your full potential. And that's really the goal of Ayurveda, to reach your full potential physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And this book will guide you and teach you how to do that. It's very interesting. I, I think that a lot of it has to do with just life, of learning how to live, maturing, uh, learning about yourself, everything about life. And I've lived a long time, uh, which I will not mention on the air, although I'm rather <laughs> proud of it, but I could tell you privately someday if I have a chance. But, um, yeah, it seems like it, it took me all my life to figure all that out, though. You know, you're... Mm -hmm. And I look at the kids these days, and sometimes I think, oh, geez. <laughs> and then I remember, oh, yeah, I was a kid once. <laughs> so, hey, this has been wonderful. Be sure to tell our viewers where they can find you, where they can learn more about uh, this Ayurveda healing, and where they can get your book and maybe catch you sometime on a lecture. Or there might be somebody out there that would actually be 
want to come to your college. So tell us where to find you. Well, there, actually, certainly, Dorothy. Uh, first of all, the book is called Healing Your Life, Lessons on the Path of Ayurveda, and it's available in any bookstore. It's also available for uh, Kindle through Amazon.com and through on Nook through Barnes & Noble. And so it can be downloaded to e-readers, and there's also physical copies in, in bookstores. Uh, also, for information about the college, you can go to our website. It's www.ayurveda.com, A-Y-U-R, V as in Victor, E-D as in David, A, uh, college, C-O-L-L-E-G-E.com. So ayurvedacollege.com. And on our college website will be information about the school, as well as workshops and seminars. And you can also go to the Healing Your Life website, and that's healing-your-life.com. So those are great ways to find out more information, both about the college and also about Healing Your Life. They might be able to find it if they uh, went in and Googled Mark Halpern. Maybe. They certainly could do that. Um, I, I understand that I come up pretty high on the, the list when you Google Mark Halpern, especially, especially they, Mark Halpern, Ayurveda. If they spell it M-A-R-C. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, a lot of, of people course, will. Your name is you're right. You're right. Here. A lot of people spell it with a K. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, I don't think there are very many Mark Halperns that are spelled the way you are. So I, one thing I wanted to ask you is, did you actually go to India to take your training? I've had training in India. I've also done teaching in India, and I also had a lot of training in the United States. You know, when I st first started studying Ayurveda, which was now uh, 25 years ago, almost, um, when I first started studying Ayurveda, there were no programs for the study of Ayurvedic medicine here in the United States. So... I actually brought teachers over from India to the United States, and they would stay with me and live with me in my home. And I studied in, in the traditional manner of living with your teachers. And so they would come, and they would bring me the classical textbooks. And I spent many years studying Ayurvedic medicine in that way. And then I continued my studies by going to India and to visiting different, visiting different Ayurvedic schools and colleges in India. And at the time I went to India, I was not only studying in India, but I was also teaching Ayurveda in India. And I was giving lectures at Benares Hindu University, at Gujarat Ayurveda University, meeting with postgraduate uh, post students, and mostly talking about the development of Ayurveda here in the United States, which is growing quite rapidly. Great. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you for talking with me today, Mark. It's been wonderful having you, and we'll look for your book. I'll look for it myself, and I'm sure I can learn a lot. Thank you very much. It's been very pleasant. And so this is Thank Dorothy you. May Mercer signing off for Talk Story TV. Watch for us on uh, TalkStoryTV.com, talk .com, and you'll soon see Mark's uh interview up very shortly. Thank you. Goodbye, Mark. Bye-bye.